my father in the Lord, myself, and four others, we had gone to Kenya Technical Camp Meeting, 1979. We stayed in an hotel called Mayo Hotel in Tulsa. Then one morning, my father in the Lord called all of us to his room, told us that he would be going to heaven very soon, and that I would be succeeding him. Just came in the blue like that. And of course he was, was praying the spirit. Well, the news hit me hard. I crumbled down the floor. And those who were with me, we all began to pray. We all began to, to sob and to cry in the spirit. And suddenly there was a knock at the door. I was the one closer to the door, so I opened to the door, and it was I opened the door, and at the door stood the engineer of the hotel. And his question was, "What kind of instruments are you playing?" I said, "We are not playing any instruments; we are praying." He said, "No." He came in. He looked through the room. He looked under the bed. He looked in the wardrobe. He saw nothing. Puzzled. On his way out, he turned to me again. He said, What do you say you are doing? I said, We are praying. So I asked him, I said, Why? He said, Because the hotel is shaking. And we have traced the source of the shaking to this room. We prayed. And the hotel shook. Of course, they didn't believe it was our prayer that shook the hotel. So after we left, they closed down the hotel. They dug around the foundation to see if there's something wrong. They couldn't find anything wrong. But they refused to reopen the hotel for 30 years. After 30 years, I went to visit us again. My wife, my children, and some of my friends, and my beloved friend, Pastor Stephen. So we went to that hotel. And that's the hotel where we prayed. And the hotel shook. And I felt a compassion in me that we had prayed. And this hotel had been closed for 30 years. So quietly I moved close to the hotel, touched the wall, and prayed a quiet prayer. And it was reopened a year later. And it wasn't long after that that I began to see. The first thing I saw We were going to a workers' meeting. I've just joined the workers there. And I went to the toilet to ease myself. As I sat on the toilet seat, suddenly the door of the toilet became like a screen. And I saw on the screen the headquarters church service was going on. Everything was normal. And then at a stage, the door of the vestry opened, and the man who was going to preach, and the man who was going to interpret, came out of the vestry where they had been praying, evidently. And they went to the altar, conducted the service, and there was a mighty outpouring of the power of God. And the vision disappeared. And then I realized I was in the toilet. I've seen something. Soon as I got to the church, I went to my father in the Lord, excited. Daddy, I saw something today. I told him what I saw. 
And the old man put his two hands on his head and said, Oh God. I was afraid. What's the trouble now? Then he called the pastors then, about two or three of them. Come, come, come. They all okay. came. He told me to repeat what I said I saw. I repeated it. And the old man said, Sir, at the beginning of this church, that's what we used to do. Whoever is going to preach, whoever is going to interpret, will be in the, in the vestry praying until it is time for them to come and preach. But we stopped years ago. God had shown me something that was missing in the church. Something they were doing ever before I became born again that they had stopped. God brought it back. And my desire for miraculous provisions was heightened when my father and the Lord shared his own testimony with some of you older ones know. How at the beginning of the church when things were very tough. One day the wife prepared a pot of soup and the almighty God spoke to my father in the Lord and said tell your wife from now let her just keep on dishing from the pot of soup without looking inside. Don't look inside. Just keep on dishing. And so one day the woman will dish and beef will come out. Tomorrow it will dish, chicken will come out. And she kept on. <laughs> Until one day curiosity overcame her. And she looked into the pot and the pot was dried. So when my father told me the story, I said, ah, okay. It means the God of Elijah is still alive. He can still provide. 